had to write it down. Usually I'm quite good with my lines, but I forgot it, so I'm just going to pull it out. What? <laughs> Did you say anything? No, I you. No? Okay. Okay. Jeff Chrysler, a performer in The Americans and a soloist in Against Evil, uh, has worked with such greats as Spinal Taps, Tony Hendrick, Monty Python, Terry Jones, am I right? Yeah, so all, all true, all true. He's a cast uh, and writer on uh, The Daily Show's Liz Winstead's Shoot the Messenger, author of the new book from HarperCollins, Get Rich Cheating, writer on Comedy Central and CNN. Is that the news channel, CNN? Uh, they have web blog for a while. Uh, I thought you kind of like, like, wrote the news. That's like some fucking <laughs> <time. laughs> Only Fox News writes the news. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, you've worked with the likes of Nick Gregory, Robin Williams, Greg Proves, all big names in comedy. Uh, you play blues saxophone, you speak French and Russian, you've done broadcasting for sports, you play <laughs> football, you taught English in Russia, you started a non profit to at risk youth, you live in New York City, and last week you found the original copy of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> How do you fit it all in? Uh, I, I don't know. I did not find an original. Copy of the Bible. Uh, yeah. I, I lied, I made that whole I just, uh, you know, do it anyway? Um, I would uh, cut out the second half. <laughs> now, I, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I, I think in show business, as everyone on the stage and probably most people on this know, you have to put your fingers in a lot of pies and hope that one bakes up. And so I've just been. Busy, I reckon know. you got some fairly bird digits there. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I can't got a lot of food. You the pie once it's in the oven. That's just... That's my you problem. You've got to close the door. No, I'm sure you cook the pies first, then you put your fingers in the oven. That's what I always assumed, anyway. I have a lot of balls in the air, and uh, if <laughs> any one of them lands in a pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... <clears throat> now, uh, we saw uh, the Americans today, which yes. are in, uh, with two lovely ladies. Uh, yes. It's fine. Are they here? They're not here, are they? No, they're texting. <laughs> uh, and it's fairly cutting edge sort of political satire. Were you involved in the writing of that? Yeah, the, the idea actually came out of an, an idea of mine, a routine of mine, where basically in, in America, um, the, there's two parties, as you know, Republicans, George Bush's party, Democrats, and the Clintons and Barack Obama. And the Republicans always treat people very sternly, like the father figure. The Democrats treat people kind of like a mother figure. And the, the people of America are sort of like a teenager, very obsessed with pop culture, not very paying attention, and dating a boy named Ira Rapp. And, uh, <laughs> and we kind of, so we took like the idea of a family that's a normal sitcom, and we imposed this kind of political structure on it. And, um, and we all kind of wrote it together, and I think some of the ideas were mine, and, and all, all the funny stuff was mine. <laughs> It, yeah, it, it does really, like, it, it kind of mocks the American politics system, doesn't it? Yeah, well, uh, yes. <laughs> um, it, it, it's a system right for mocking. Um, and it mocks itself sometimes. But yeah, so, so I think yeah. if you can mock something, then it's obviously, it, by mocking it, you say, well, if you didn't do that, that would be the right thing to do. And you think, sort of, we've got this election coming to with, with Barack Obama, who's yeah. pretty much going to win it, I suppose, isn't he? Yeah, like it, it, it feels right. Look, we, uh, I've been let down twice in the last two elections, by my belief, and, and I, you know what, my, I also do a show, a stand-up show about political comedy, particularly in America, and I, I think Barack Obama's the better choice by far, but we'll be let down again. It's possible. Every four years, you seem to get a new sort of say to it's like the, big, the most important election ever, every right. time it's a new election. Right. Well, that's what I mean, our show, and I'm like, well, we have one show left, so if you come tomorrow, I'll pretend you don't hear this. Um, it's at three o'clock at the Gilded Balloon. We're at the half price hut. We all thought that. That's good. Tell what you see. I can tell. Oh. Now, um, <laughs> cheapskate, loud mouth, whatever. It's hard to tell. Uh, there is, a, like, particularly with Barack Obama, there's a sense of like we call it Obama mania, where people are just like blown away by the possibility, oh, he's going to cure cancer, and the iceberg will grow back, and Princess Diana will rise from the grave, and yay! Um, I think it's great that people are excited, and kids are, young people in particular, are involved in politics, but that's, to me, it's not enough. Like, politicians can only do so much. It's up to us to fix shit. Yeah, my people are pretty good. Kiss. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> but, um, as well, like, I always think of American politicians, like, 
Where was Barack Obama during the last election? Was he around? Was he sort of a young politician coming up? Or Bro, did you just sort of pick someone out of a really like, an Ivy League right. educated guy and you say, right, you, you know what, you're, you're going to be... <laughs> Barack <laughs> Obama was... Um, right now, I don't know if you know, there are the, the political conventions. Do you guys know about that? Like, the different parties have their conventions for, for a few days. Um, in the 2004, at this time, Barack Obama gave kind of the keynote address of the Democratic Convention. It was kind of this coming out party. And people were just like amazed. I mean, he's a great orator. Like, you've got to give him that. And after what we've had for the last year, it's nice to have someone that can use multisyllabic words. And uh, <laughs> good point, Bob. And um, <laughs> that was kind of this. <laughs> That was kind of his emergence on the national scene, and in America, he had the fortunate position of not being in national office back in 2003, when everybody was a bunch of fucking pussies and voted for the Iraq War. So he can say I was against the Iraq War without having the, the baggage of every other candidate who came and voted for it. Right, okay. Uh, now, moving away from all politics stuff, because you're yeah. a very accomplished writer and actor as well. Uh, during the writing strike, you were sort of a writer and an actor, we were like, uh, yeah, to your right mates, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna just go and do some acting. Yeah, 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 I would you guys, yeah, you can, yeah, let's strike, man. let's let's strike, but I'm gonna go and do some of the acting while you guys are striking. Were you, were you able to sort of dip into both sides of it? Well, yes and no. I mean, I think that actually my stand up is more than my second, or not, my stand up is my number one thing. And the writing is second, and acting is third. So for me, during the writer's strike, I just focused more on my stand-up. And acting has always been like a distant third. But I did like that little scene you did, and I think I'm going to put in my show next year. <laughs> called Stuff You Thought Of On The Last Night Of A Fringe When He Was Really Tired. Key, <laughs> okay. key. Okay. So, um, so, go back to the show. You know you've got the uh, sitcom thing going on? Yeah. Uh, so between each chapter, you've got a little segment where on the screen you have I assume it was just members of the British public unit. Sort of, uh, Amer is it Americans or America in five words? Well, what we did is, um, a lot of the ones you chose for the, for the player, Scottish people are from Britain, but we, <clears throat> in my travels, and this last year I've traveled all over the place, I uh, took a video camera and our, my cast did it too. We asked people for the first five words that came to mind when we said the Americans. And it, we had a range of stuff like you saw in the show, and we, we used that to kind of inform the show and also reflect upon we're showing what we think of ourselves and also then what people think of us. And it was always amazing to me because people did say stuff like you know, freedom, emancipation, constitution, uh, you know, democracy, but then also McDonald's and fat bastards and yeah, you know, fuck dead and all of that. That's quite an easy one, isn't it? That's you think that's okay. It, it is easy, but you know what? I mean, that's, people have that range of emotions towards America. And, and I think that this is, you know, the most important election in American history, just like everyone that came before and everyone will come after, but it is a precarious time. I mean, our standing in the world has really taken a fall, and I think people have two opinions. One is possibility, and the other is your question. Okay. How do you think the people of America <coughs> would feel if they watched a show or saw the Well, I mean, particularly those like people saying their five words, and I, I think that um, there are a couple, there are a few different Americas that would see it a few different ways, um, and I think there's the extremists on either side. Extreme over here, the, the liberal left would say, "Oh, they're right," and there's an extreme, the liberal right, or the liberal right, the conservative right, to be like, "Oh, fuck those French people. Everyone foreign is French." Um, <laughs> And then there's a, you know, people in the middle that I like to think is, is probably, I imagine it's a larger number than probably really exists, that would say, you know what, there's some valid points there, but you know, we've still got good things, and, and I wouldn't harp on the negative. Um, I think the problem in American politics has become really polarized, and it, the truth is, there's really just the 1% or 1% on each side, and most of us are in the middle. Um, but it's the vocal point at the end that would react strongly to that one right there. And uh, when you were, were you behind the camera when you asked the people to sort of up in five words, were you filming it? Yeah, some of them. Were you, were you offended or were you just like, whatever? No, I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I've tried to remain, and I think I've done fairly well, open-minded about politics and people's beliefs. I think it's just um, responsible as a citizen of the world to like hear what other people have to say. 
And that was the one we chose five words, I think it was perfect because I thought I could ask an end you for three words and it goes boom, boom, boom. But the sound about five is like that extra bit. And you probably saw some of Yeah, the I thought they sort of did one, two, three. And yeah, the first stopped. three were like the obvious ones, like fats, right. McDonald's, money, right. and then yeah, a lot of the time the last two were always quite original. Right. Quite it's such a thing, like you let you let people talk. I mean, I've never been trained as a journalist, but I think good journalists, good interviews, are the ones that let people say what they have to say. Um, and so that's what we're approach to. Galvin.